Designing the Future of Eglinton, an inspiring talk by internationally renowned architect and urbanist Antoine Grumbach. Here we are at North Toronto Collegiate. world that's both 
built and vegetal. So very interesting fascination he's had for years that I've followed between what's lying the history of the city, the, 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 the nature, the, the ravines, the lake, the, the, what's underneath the city that we still have yet to discover here. The primacy of the public realm and the need for that realm to be eternal. Antoine did a, one of the six new towns that was built around Paris over 30 years ago. And he got, he cajoled the, the government of France to let him build the public realm first. All the others were the conventional, let the developers build it. But he convinced him, no, you know, the developers are going to build poor housing, I think he called it shit. And at least he got a building out of the air and into the street in the public spaces. And he described it as the ruins of a town that never existed. And what happened is the developers came and responded to it and built beautiful new housing. And it's the only one of the six towns that actually pays for itself today. The notion of the DNA of place, that every city and every community has its own character, and, and understanding what differentiates one city from another. He's not here to lay Paris on us, on us, and we didn't invite him here to do that. He's here to work with us on the DNA of Toronto and help us understand that. Because it's useful to have eyes that come from away to, to, to look and, and help us understand what's right in front of us. And finally, the overwhelming need to integrate planning, architecture, engineering, landscape architecture, and public art to bring those together to make a complete city. Two weeks ago, somebody gave me a, a, a photograph of my grandfather, who I understood was a surveyor, and, and uh, it was a kid graduating class at U of T in 1900. And I noticed it said, graduating from the School of Practical Sciences. I thought, well, that's fine. I, mean, I thought he was in engineering. And I looked up what the School of Practical Sciences were, and what you studied there. It was all the engineering, all, all the, the whole range of engineering, sciences, architecture, planning, landscape architecture, surveying. They were all done together. So over the last hundred years, we managed to separate those all out at a, at a university level into professional organizations. And can you imagine the difficulty? Well, you can see the difficulty we've had making cities out of organizations that are actually working separately, if not against each other. So to bring those, or, those professions back together is, is at the basis of Antoine's work. As co-leaders of the Ableton Project, Kelvin, Brooke, and I didn't invite Antoine here to copy Paris, but rather because we admire his idea and he ours. We welcome his willingness to work closely with us to understand the DNA of Toronto, an understanding that started for him when he first moved here in 1968, and when we first met and spent two years here having to leave Paris in the 68 riots. We will work together to create a new, more effective, more meaningful model for the city's newest transit avenue. One that contemplates and celebrates the endless completion of our confusing, great, but rapidly emerging city. Antoine is an architect and urban designer and planner who was born in 1942 graduated from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris in 1967. He received the Grand Prix National de Urbanisme et Art Urbain in 1992. He's both a, both a theorist and a practitioner of the links between architecture and urban form. He's been a visiting professor at the University of Toronto, Princeton, and Harvard. His extensive body of built and theoretical work was the subject of an exhibition at the Centre Pompidou, also in 1992. His architectural projects, well, let's say his projects, because they're all architectural, but include public spaces, large public buildings, universities, hotels, offices, social housing, and a variety of large and very large landscape and infrastructure projects. His commitment to urban issues draws him to a large-scale plan, to large-scale planning and his concern for public transportation that led him to plan and design several projects, recent projects in Paris, including Le Tramway and the Mobility Hub Station at the Bibliothèque Francois Mitron. 
In January 2004-2009, he was chosen by the President of the Republic to be one of ten architects in charge of the project for the Grand Paris. His proposition to consider Paris, Rouen, and La Havre along the River Seine, 200 kilometers, a 200, 200 kilometer long megalopolis, is strongly supported by the government and is currently in development. In January 2012, Rumbach was selected with Jean-Michel Michel Wilmot to be one of the 10 teams in competition for the regional expansion of Moscow. In July 2012, his team was selected for the lead prize. So he knows what it's like to work in cold cities, as well as warm, culturally comfortable, and full of good tasting food cities. <laughs> and in the end, though, he summarizes his philosophy and his, his approach as a concern, again, for the endless completion, incompletion of the city. And in fact, today, if you don't know already, you should know, today is a historic day because we, in fact, signed an agreement, the City, Metro Lakes, and the TTC, to secure an agreement moving forward for the implementation of four light rail transit lines in this city, $8.4 billion worth of development. This is wonderful news. This is very good. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Your city needs you. Your city needs you to be involved in planning its future, in part because of this endless involving that is taking place here. There's a great opportunity here in the context of the Eglinton Crosstown to, in fact, think really carefully about the kind of city that we want to create for the future. This event is part of a larger series of consultations that is being undertaken by the City Planning Department. And I'm not sure if Lorna introduced her team or not. Did you introduce your team? So there's a team. Are you guys in the room? Okay, so stand up, my friends. Everyone on the Edmonton Crosstown team. Stand up and wave your arms. It's a bit dark, so it's hard to see. But it's important for you to know that there are a team of very talented and dedicated planners in the City Planning Division who are working under Lorna's leadership to execute this planning process with the consulting team on a very, very tight timeline. And the work that they are undertaking is essential to the success. We're not just building transit. We are, in fact, building a great city. And this is both a visionary as well as a functional exercise. For example, we need to understand and plan for how Eglinton will both look and work the first day of the operation of the light rail transit. But we also need to understand how to grow and evolve our communities and our city with this infrastructure in the long term. If we only build light rail transit, we miss the mark. Our opportunity here is to build a fabulous city and to think about how we can leverage this investment in a really substantive way to benefit the overall structure of the city and how we move about in the city overall and also how we move in the city. We need to ask some very important questions. What will the streets look like in the future? Where will people live? Where will people work? What will the buildings of the future in fact look like? Where do the tall buildings go as we grow? Do we need to plan for more schools and more community centers? Can we create better connections to our parks and ravine system? Will it be easy to walk to work, to walk to school? Because we all know that transit, fundamentally, is about building a pedestrian-oriented city. There are many, many questions that we're going to need to answer, both over the coming year and in the years to come. But let me be clear, we are a growing city. More and more people are continually calling Toronto home. Toronto is a great and desirable city. This is why people come here, to live and work. We offer a very high quality of life. But there is a risk. There is a risk that we do not, in fact, leverage the transportation investments that we are about to make. 
in such a way as to create great places and to create great communities. And this evening, and the consultations we're going to be undertaking, are about having a substantive, informed conversation about the, want, the kind of city that we want to become and the way these infrastructure investments can in fact define the city that we are becoming. Now some of the work has already been done. Uh, it's been done by the province of Ontario as well as by the city of, of, of Toronto. At the provincial level, Eglinton is already identi identified as an intensification corridor in the regional transportation plan, the big move, which, was, uh, uh, which came forward in 2008. At the city level, Eglinton is already identified as an avenue within the, within the official plan. Now, avenues are the places that we've identified that can accommodate our future growth. And it's very important for us to be clear about where growth will go and what that growth will look like, precisely because we want to be clear about where change won't happen, where growth won't go. Those two questions need to be intrinsically linked. And in part, that's because growth along the avenue can in fact be moderate, it can consider context in a very careful way, it can ensure that we protect stable neighborhoods that are recognized within the official plan as places that do not need to change as we accommodate a significant amount of growth. We also want to recognize local neighborhood areas which are not necessarily targeted for growth and development, and places like Young Eglinton, which are centers for growth, and in fact will see some of the most intensive growth in the city. We need to be very thoughtful and careful about how this growth takes place. A key objective of tonight is considering how other places have leveraged transit infrastructure. There's an opportunity for us to learn from best practices elsewhere, although I would argue we have many great best practices in the City of Toronto around planning our land use and our transportation infrastructure in concert. It's one of those reasons why people already come. But there are opportunities for us to learn about more recent developments, work that has taken places, for example in Europe, some of the places that Antoine is going to talk about today, where transit has been leveraged in order to ensure that we're creating great places. We want to think really carefully, carefully about ensuring that we're creating solutions that are very specific to the City of Toronto. This process, this consultation process, this study process, that will result in a very strong and clear planning framework for how growth will be accommodated along the corridor is going to be informed by your participation. Tonight is an important part of that. Tonight is about inspiration. Together, we are in fact going to make this city even greater. I believe we are on the cusp of transitioning, maybe even formally, launching the mid-rise city through our transportation infrastructure investments. This evening is about learning. It's about minimizing some of the risks that growth can present. It's about sharing ideas, and it is about building our city together. Please join me in welcoming Antoine for our keynote presentation. I'm very glad to be invited to be part of this fantastic project of Atlantic, coming back to Toronto 40 years after I was teaching at U of T and working as John as one of my students, and uh, I love Toronto. I've been back some time in between, but I'm, I'm not been living like I was when I was teaching. And I think that uh, tonight I am going to try to show you all the experiences I had from from this this, uh, this the foundation I was as a student at the Ecole des Beaux Arts, working on the. On, on what is the idea of an object, the geometry and the rationality, to something which is the complexity of the city, which is something which has no end, no beginning, which always gets in transformation, and which, as the science, contemporary science told us, that we have to be aware that we are working on something which evolves always, which is always changing and to be very careful not to stop the development of something which is going. And we 
which has a complexity of this image of nature, in which it is very difficult to say how it was really me, even though I believe that the foundation of any approach of the city is rooted on the history of tradition. So I'm going to give you some, some reflection about the work, part of our work, which is architecture and uh, uh, landscape and uh, public space, but also, as you see, very much on mobility. So I would like to say that there are three scales which I, I would like to consider with you tonight. One is the scale of a region and how you approach a large scale, because I think that no project of mobility can be think of without being related to a large regional thinking. And then secondly, that the great question of mobility is for me not only to move, but it is to transform the city and also to fight against social exclusion, because I think that all the great development of the 20th century by creating more and more distance between the different status through the sort of social exclusion in which we know all over the world the problem because people that cannot move from one place to the another are really uh, excluded from society. But all that has to also to come to the scale of the public space. Because for me, public space is my dedication to, to, to work, to, to, to take position and shaping the public space from benches to, to, to be public building. And this image is, is a very famous image about what we call the banana blue, the blue banana. <coughs> it shows, it shows the, the, the scale of the problem. We could, I, I, we could take the same thing, taking a photo in North America and trying to understand how people are organized today at a large scale because of the new system of transportation, because of the, the movement. The large scale is revealed <coughs> by those images uh, of satellite of the night over Europe. And it gives you that your responsibility is to deal with some projects, that you are part always of a very large problematic. And that, in fact, in this problematic, the, the, the movement is at all scale from the, from the, from the pedestrian walk to the rapid census system are connected as they are in how all the circulation is connected in our body and with a lot of complexity and a lot of difficulty and a lot of articulation and that has to be the task that we have to, to deal to, to understand that the, the city exists because you can go from one place to, to the other. From my thesis, it is long time ago, I, I drew this image which has never, that is still basis of my reflection, that is the question of time in the making of a city. This was the idea that just after a bus stop you can really create what I call the service station of the daily life just by bringing objects that have been separate from one another and that will, if you bring them together without any special design because I don't think that city is, is, is an object that could be intimidated in design because there are always objects that arrive that, are, that have not been, uh, that have that, that, that arrived by, by accident or, or, or by accumulation. But I think that one can organize so that any single element according to the fact that it can be composed with other elements and create a place of identity. Because I think the question is the place of identity. But this place of identity, I work very much with the people and what they see. And this is an image in one of the big projects we are doing for reorganizing the social housing. And we took all the people of the building which is behind us then, because we were going to destroy this building. And so we had to relocate all the people in different new, new buildings. But we worked with them and they were very uh, enthusiastic with the project that we, we, we did. I think you can't do in the 21st century any project without involving the people. But the question is, that what is this form that is existing today? New extension in the 21st century for those large social, social residence building of, of block 
parks and uh, uh, expansion of little house, uh, freeways and uh, light industry or heavy industry. This has created something which has nothing to do with the, the world of the city. Something which is totally new where you have freeway, commercial centers and, and a mix. Something we have to understand ourselves, is there a form in the city that, in the, in, which is in the metropolis? Is there something that can bring people together, can, can organize a different event? In some artists in the, in the 20th century have made some collage trying to express the complexity of the city, of this accumulation of contradictory objects. And still, Thinking of that, I think this painter, which is a painter Kulschlitter, with this collage, is giving us a little bit what is a city. It is a, it's a, 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 an accumulation of, of collage, but it is also something that you never see, which is underground. Some things that, that serve the city, or transport, and also the fact that it comes very often with a huge complexity that people don't know at all, cannot, and I think this is links with, of course, the movement within, within the city. And the complexity of any, any, any system of, of from, from, the, from the elevated railway in Paris to the very <coughs> rapid new transit system down below, there is a, a, a huge complexity within all the city of what is under the, under the surface of the city. And we have to concentrate also on, on that problem. And there is one, of, one thing I just have been very interested in. It was the Metro of Caracas many years ago. Uh, that when it was created, sorry, when it was created, two things happened. First, they put this is the main street of Caracas, which is a great city like, like Toronto. And they put the subway under the, this avenue in the middle of the city very narrow avenue. And after the, the was they created, they had to dig to open and they, 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 they made a pedestrian places in the center of the city because there was a subway behind. And when the subway came outside in the in the suburb, they did an elevated uh, that was cheaper than doing a tunnel and they created a series of of public space around the pillars of the and all through the speak, social housing, endless construction of block after block after block, the, the arrival of the, of the elevated metro creates this place where you can see the little coffee uh, on, the, on the left and places with benches and, and children to play. So that is something fantastic that you can imagine that, of course, in Paris or Toronto, this will not be the same things, but this image for me is very crucial that when we do transport system, we have to do things of its ability to transport totally the daily life of the people. This is one of my favorite uh, image. Uh, this is a plan that has been built by an engineer in Madrid which is called Sobia El Mata, which is called the Linear City. It was in the middle of the, of the southern part of the 19th century. It was just a city in the suburbs, which was around a, a, a tramway. So how do you develop a city along a tramway? And he made an extension. And I think this is a, a very visionary thing. The southern image, which for me is quite crucial, is this one from the suburb. It's interesting, it's people. It's, uh, they call it a very psycho and geographic uh, a portrait. And it says that in a city, people never grasp the totality as we have to do it when we are working on plans. So they work, they have an image, a representation of the city which is made of different spaces. And of course, when you work on a subway system or on a train or a are pointing on different different places and these different places structure the image of the, the personal image of the of the people and I think that when we work and that we work on the event we have to organize uh, this under 
understanding that there will be certain space of very great importance, mostly the place of interconnection, that will be the, the, the identification of the, of the city by the, by the people. So now we come to, to some of my projects and my work to, to understand indirectly the approach which we will certainly nourish our approach for, the, for, the, for this project, which has been already very long, since a long time in this, discussed in, in Tom. <coughs> One is Saint Metropolis, which is a, a project that I did inside a consultation for the Greek Paris and that was selected by the President of the Republic, which is to say that today the big the scale of the big metropolis is 200 and 300 to 300 kilometers because of the rapid transit train that take one hour. The other that the big economy of the world is, has been totally transformed by the container and that a city that has no access to a port, Toronto has access to the port of course, cannot pretend to have any economic uh, development and Paris has to achieve something that was foreseen by, by Napoleon when, when he said Paris Grand Le Havre, a single city whose, whose the river Seine is the main street. What it mean? It means that uh, when you work at a large scale, when you work at a large scale and the geopolitics, the identity of a territory is a geographical identity. And that uh, the, the fact that you have a river, the fact that you have a shorter shore, the fact that you have a valley, or when you go at a smaller scale, when you have uh, places like the, the two ravines in, 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 uh, in the city, are elements on which you can grasp, you can articulate identity of the region, identity of a city, identity of a, of a part of a city. If you find again the, the, the reality of the topography, the reality of the geography. At the, at the, at the. the whole thing also is that today everybody uh, is, is in search of intensity, urban intensity. You want to have coffee in places where there are people to walk, to go, to walk with your children and so on. And also to want very often to be able to, be, to go very easily in the nature. So we are a kind of uh, hysterical picking, wishing something which is contradicting, uh, wishing the intensity. So, so I think that uh, the city of, of the 20th century will, will be more and more turned to articulate those two nations, those two concepts of nature and intensity. And I think that certainly Eglinton can help in that. In that. The other thing, of course, is that, as I tell you, weaving the mobility together is absolutely fundamental. This image for me is quite crucial. This is at the, at the, just facing the railway station of Amsterdam, in which you have the train, the tramway, the bicycle, the boat, and that more and more we have to work uh, as far as we can do by articulating all the system of community together. And of course, to see how we can start, how we can put in movement the territory, and how we can do things in a short period. I always say that my work is also a work of acupuncture, urban acupuncture, that is to find a place where you can make a small intervention that will make sense, that will grow and that will transform, and that will even escape my escape expectation and go somewhere else but to, to have like, like an acupuncture to know where you have to work. And I think that the, the point of the station within, within the city are certainly point of acupuncture fundamental for its development. Large scale consideration is necessary when you work today and of course uh, for, for us, Paris, London, Rotterdam is the articulation of Europe with with uh, everything. And um, instead of, of organizing the development of Paris on a on a very uh, like uh, uh, right of consumption, the idea of extending the concept of the metropole up to the river with all the articulation between nature and between industry and between 
so many things that we need between beautiful landscape and, uh, and historical places and uh, industry, heavy industry along the river. And uh, of course, the, the port is something which is quite important. Uh, in that sense, I can say the metaphor <coughs> here that you've seen the diversity. And this diversity is one of the key issues in Eglinton because from west to east, you have a real cross town in society and a different, different groups and different culture and different ambiance and so on. I think this will be certainly one of the key, uh, key problems. But the problem remains to articulate life in the Grand Valley, articulate the different means of transport, transport of the people and transport of the goods, the water, the train, and the road. And of course, uh, this came to a, a system in which we organize in the respect of the nature a very efficient system of transportation perpendicular to the river because the river is below and there are big plateau and you have the freeway and the rail track on the, on the plateau. So to organize, to organize what is a big plan, the weaving of all the mobility from train, cars, tramway, uh, bicycles and so this is the general plan of the weaving of mobility at the scale of 200 kilometers, which are 200 kilometers between the world. And I think to have uh, an ambition when you do a new line to weave it into all, all the system of mobility is certainly what is going to be one of the key things. And of course, to, to, to articulate a new line, like this, well, this is a line of, of, of uh, the red line is a new line that is linking all the different points of mobility, of train, of, of, of different things, and which cross the river, go down, and which, along which we plan a system of organizing a uh, type of uh, construction that are articulating nature and, uh, and uh, housing and, 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 and as a project that is linked with mobility. So I think mobility, this is very uh, clear in this region because you have a lot of nature and we don't have so much uh, intensity here and, and we are creating this along the line of the, of the, of the mission. But of course also just to tell you that I believe that even I don't like the image that you have on the right because it's not I mean, well designed enough, but all the freeway of the world will become public transport system because the new system of transport, rapid transit system, have to, to come as far as possible near to the city or around the city. And so the big challenge of the 21st century will be to create a new system of transport on the freeway. This is what we are working on, on in Paris. And of course, one cannot forget that you have to find identity and cultural identity. And this is one project that done the landscape architect Lina Sofer to do, the, to do a project of uh, a line which is called the Axe de la Lumière from Paris to Le Havre, and which will, which will deliberately select places when the, uh, the traditional axis of Paris cuts the, cut the river. So what I want to say is that if there is some art to be developed with the line, it has to have a large, long, large scale of problem. It's not a collection of objects. The new system, or in Paris itself, I am not going to comment on that today, but I just want to show you it. You know, inside the Paris, there has been this new law for creating a rapid transit system around the, around the city, which is complementary to what we are doing for the long distance from Paris to the to Havre. And this is interesting because it has been uh, submitted to a new law a new society, society in Hungary, that has been created, okay, and a new law that says that around each station you can expropriate 500 meters, uh, all what you want, even more if the, if the, if the councillor wanted, to be able to, to, to have a, a good relation and a good densification around the, around the station. And this project is. So from the big project, then we start more local project, I'm not going to comment, one on the, on the, on the 
mouth of the, of the river Seine and the other one which is called Axe Seine from, from Paris to about uh, 4, 60 kilometers from Paris uh, along, along the river. One is, by example, to reconciliate industry and nature with the Greek part of the exterior. And the other one is uh, much, I, I, I am going to comment a little bit more because it is fairly, there is a new line of, of there is a new line of, uh, of trade that is going to, to come from La Défense and going to Paris to the Gare. Then from, from the same line it goes all over to the east of Paris. So, so this is the new line, the new line. And each time you have a station, we, sorry, excuse me, this, this is a freeway. No, no, the line of the train is this. Here. And each time we have been moved, this is about 40 kilometers, uh, 40 kilometers. And uh, each time around the station, we develop new development of of housing, offices, uh, uh, different things. So, but what is uh, interesting is that you you have very often from the valley, you have the train, you have the, the the freeway, you have another line of train, another freeway which is there, difference of height from that. And so we organized also a new system of mobility, which is a cavalry car, to, to go and to serve the train station, the train station, the, the exchange of the, of the freeway, pass, uh, pass uh, over the, the river, go up and go on the top of the of the hill where you usually have the social the social housing. And so that has been a, a, a system which is now much developed in all the all the city of the world and which is very efficient because it is very cheap, very efficient, very quickly built and uh, very ecological. And uh, these are all the late time we are studying uh, actually in the new new system. But by the well, this is a new port that I am designing here with the 500 uh, hectare port at the, at the arrival from the, the river because there is a canal going to Amsterdam, Rotterdam that is going to be created and so we create a new port and we create a new system of, of uh, tramway there that is, uh, that is going above and serving the station so that from the station you can go into the new uh, district of, uh, of housing. In Moscow, uh, the problem is very clear. Uh, two things. But this the city has decided to, 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 to create an extension of the city of 150,000 hectares, which is one time more what exists already. And the city is 11 million of people and it is so packed with cars that you can't move anymore in the city. Absolutely terrible and there are a lot of reasons. But, um, so we work again on the big scale just to, to understand what is the, the geopolitical goal of Moscow to go. Uh, we propose that Moscow became the capital of Eurasia particularly and we try to see the consequence in terms of Line, high speed line linking Europe to, to uh, or linking and to see how it can change the image. Just to tell you that to, you see, Paris is this little black city, and this is Moscow. Basically. This is Paris is 2 million, and this is 11 million. Of, uh, and this is the extension that the city of Moscow has done. One time and a half. The, the thing. And this is a region of Paris, and this is a region of Moscow, which is, and so we had to work on the, on the planning. Thing. So we work very much, of course, on the on the, on the, uh, the multi modality, multi centrality of the region, and certain and all the axis of movement within the area, uh, and of course to organize the, the the relation between all the the, the town. In, in the region. But the thing is that we were very much concerned about what were the DNA of, of Moscow. And the DNA is certainly trees, forests, and water, because 
is, is quite impressive. And if you look in the, through the city, you find that the blocks are absolutely triangular. So the blocks of the city are very, very, very big. So that when you are in the street, this is like, like the Champs Elysees of, of Moscow here. You enter the block and you find the forest gate. Because the block are so big that inside is the, the, is the forest. And we, we, we try to, this is a big difficulty because the blocks are so big that you have not enough street. But then we concentrate on the idea that this is the, the quality of Moscow, to have this contradiction between very, very densely built street and big garden and big forest in the middle of it. And then we say that all the new town, that we, the, all the new development, the new town, the new development we got there, would have to, to be uh, very, very big blocks of uh, 200 meters and 300 meters perpendicular in all the, all the development. To, 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 to work, there was, we were 10 teams working for the Split Moscow project. Uh, among them, by example, uh, Omar, the Dutch architect, uh, they proposed four big new towns for the extension. Four new towns that would be on each of the, this is one airport, there is another airport, there is another airport, there is another airport. He wanted, he wanted to be huge towns. This was the extension of the, of the city. And, uh, and what, what is happening here for us is that the existing, this is by Dr. Leninskaya, this is going to, going to uh, St. Petersburg. There, those, those, those natural roads along the, the, the freeway or how the train is, are very important to be reinforced to keep the quality of the forest going into, into the, and of course in the extension, we propose one line of train that, that is going to sail within uh, six, 60 kilometers from, from the center, from the Kremlin here down to the end of it. This is 60 kilometers of a line of train that is going to articulate all new development. And this will be a model for the development of the different, uh, different uh, system of organization. Just to give you the scale, this is Manhattan. So you see that how gigantic it is. So this is Manhattan and this is existing Moscow and this is the extension in which we have to, we have to work. And of course, one of the things for us was crucial was the existing of the water. Existing to a very strong element. So I would say the relation of Toronto to the, to the lake is for me quite but of course, you, 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 even if you are far from the center, you know that somewhere you, are you will achieve and the system of mobility should take account of this. So in Moscow, we took the river as one of the key figures also for the restructuring of the, of, the, of the city. And of course, we organized a certain type of development uh, around, the, around the lake, one of them, which has to do with mobility is to create new bridges to link the different sides of the, the different parts uh, and reorganizing huge industrial areas that are totally decay. For example, here we have six million of square meters going to, to be built, and this one is 11, 800 million of square meters built uh, on just on one, two huge industrial site in the river. And we work, as I have been done in London, for bridges that gap the, the, the river that are organized as an inhabited, inhabited bridge. And this is a project that we had win uh, some, some time in, ago, 10 years ago, in, in, uh, in London, never built. And also to change the place of the car, and this is the Kremlin, <coughs> and this place here. Moscow, the river, and to change it to, to have that a relation to the, to, the, to the water would become a, a real big part of the relation of different uh, European development around the, around the, around the, the Moscow uh, 
was one of our things. Of course, the work on mobility was crucial, and uh, this was also to organize a new system of train connecting all the airport and having, of course, new station uh, organized for the train arriving from east, from west, from north, from east, from south, and connecting the, 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 the airport and having a line that, that can cross all the, all the, all the city and, and reorganize. And also, the new line that we create was, of course, going inside the city we see very important places and this was a totally new it's called the new Moscow line and so it's a big work of how a new system of, of transportation can create uh, an identity for the city of course uh, the, the, there are a lot of connections along this line that we have identified and that can be made but the line is also a collector of, of movement and uh, all the buses, all the, all the systems should come, come to the... So, uh, we, this is three stations, this is just in the center. This is a, a place in which there is actually a huge empty industrial places, three stations arriving, and of course the idea of developing the whole era around the new Moscow line on this, uh, on this uh, project. Uh, to, to develop a new era, also another era along the, along the river, on an old uh, industrial, because a new line is going to serve this, this area. But to give it some public place of identity, not only having the, the, the new metro arriving and serving this area, because it's, in fact, the problem that this is a really huge um, economic center here, which is not failing, but mostly. <laughs> along the river, and, we, and this was a new, huge uh, railway tracks. So the station will arrive somewhere, somewhere here, a new station, and, and there is a big public space when you get out of the station that leads you to the water. This is this is Moscow in, in, in Paris, and in London, or in, in, in Toronto. It will be different. But it will be different. But I just to say that. Uh, the new line, the new development era is also bringing huge space linked with the, with the, with the subway. The new line, I, I won't speak too much on the line inside the city, the new line outside the, outside the city is, is, is quite interesting because it's a, it's a city in the forest and it's a forest in the city. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a west extension. So the stations are up always each five kilometers from one another. And uh, in between the five kilometers, you will see there is a tramway system that stops every 500 meters or 600 meters. And the, the development of the area around the thing I think is analyzing the, 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 the forest and the empty spaces so that we don't destroy the, we don't destroy the, the forest. Uh, so, well, this is another more. And of course, the idea is to have the graphic, graphic metro there and to have the tramway on top, so 500, and to organize all the relations between the, the, tram, the, the metro, the metro, the express metro, and, and the ground, and the relation of the, of the of the tramway that are having, been having shops. And when you don't have uh, a stop, the, the avenue became a very, very wide avenue with a lot of, of trees and, very, and, and quite a, a kind of very green uh, system. But also what is interesting is that uh, near the city, which is the first phase of the creation of the line, we build immediately the whole of the system. But from on the southern part, we just built the subway and on both sides we have bus 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 with road. But when there will be housing, uh, sufficiently housing, then we will cover the, the train and put the tramway and utilize the two roads as 
has promenaded on both sides of the sea. And in the far, uh, far of, the, of, the, of the line, we create only uh, with, with natural steep, uh, uh, we don't do the, the concrete and, and, uh, of the sea. And when, when we begin to, to be a little more developed, we, we, we put line of sort of bus on, on both sides and uh, in the third stage we we create the thing. So um, the question of time is, is as I say quite uh, quite uh, important. And this is uh, to show you how each each station of this is the station of the of the, of the train, of the metro sorry, and look this uh, along this line is the, the tramway that's going to sell the new but you see, this is at the same scale. This is the Place de l'Etoile in Paris. This is the Louvre. This is the same scale as this one. So it's gigantic. But there is a, a very careful study of all what exists so that it is integrated into the new. And in the forest, we create a big university because this is a big scientific university. We cannot build because the experiment. Extend this along the line and for the linear university, which is a little bit the dimension between MIT and Harvard uh, in, in, in Boston. But the, the great things about, uh, about uh, mobility, and certainly the, the project we did for the, the great Paris, uh, there has been a decision of the, of the city of Paris. The city of Paris limits are there. And when the new mayor came uh, some 10, 10 years ago, uh, he, he decided that to finish with, with, with the conflict between the inner Paris and the outside of Paris. And he said to develop all around in Paris and in the commune next to Paris, to, he could develop common projects all, all around Paris. So he, he, he put in a big decision to create one, one tramway all around Paris that will be serving all the buses terminal arriving from, 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 the, from outside so that the people can, can go because all, today they all go to Le Havre with the, with, the, with the metro or with the bus and then they have to go back again so, so to have a, a, a linear system which organized. So you can see all the, most of the line of, of metro, they all go and articulate themselves around there. So to create a system of, of tramway around Paris was uh, very um, um, important. So today, this part has been built, and on the 15th of December, that is in, uh, in a few days, a few few days, we will inaugurate this part of the day, and the study is now also up to here. And one day it will go there. We have a little problem there. It's, uh, it's certainly, and this is this has changed totally the life of the, of the people there. The people outside, they, coming from outside Paris, they stop at the door of Paris and they take the tram and they can go and take another line that go to go to know where they want to be instead of going inside to Paris and back and back to to, to there. So. Line. The first part of the line was uh, 8 kilometers, 17 station, uh, 170 uh, uh, on, on the on the on the, on the whole. Uh, This is an uh, integrating project with RATP, is the, uh, like the, uh, the transport system of, uh, of Toronto and the is the town of, uh, of Paris. How they did a, a same project together, and that was quite interesting. Not only interesting in terms of administration or financing, but also in terms of work, because we have created one single building uh, organized by the RATP, in which we put uh, uh, engineer, architects, designer, everybody was working together uh, in one building to, to produce this land. And people were working on the, on the redevelopment of all the, the activities, the schools, the, all the, the, the opportunities, all along the, all along, along the line, uh, on, a, on, a, on the basis of something which is about uh, 
500 meter to 600 meter on both, on both sides. Um, well, so this figure, I'm not going to translate that, but uh, I you can, uh, this is interesting financing. So the city is financing 30 percent, the, uh, the transport system of Paris 27 percent, the region uh, 26, and the state government 46 percent. Uh, this part of purification, which is the, the classical system of financing, uh, new system of transportation. So basically this was classical for then. It was a big boulevard created for the, by, the, by the military uh, when they built the wall in 1848. Uh, that was destroyed in 1900. And this was a big boulevard and so we could have uh, platforms <coughs> in, the, in the middle and realize the bicycle on both sides. That was very, very important to, to work on the new system of uh, bicycle. And, uh, this is this is, um, this is the, uh, the big the big platform on which which is even steep and sometimes it's, uh, it's a problem and uh, and the green uh, grass that we put on it changed totally the ambiance of the thing. The, the bicycle the bicycle platform the, the parking system the organization of the of the relation between the city and the, very important to put the, the bicycle on the, on the sidewalks because the bicycle is a friendly object, it has to be on the like you have in Rotterdam, in Amsterdam, in Holland. The bicycle are always on, not on the street. That's, that for me is very important because it's changed the nature. It is not bicycle that has to stop and to play, and when there is no bicycle, you, you can people who skate in and so on and so on. And also to organize the parking of the people. This is what uh, one, one part, and this is also what is quite important was the station. So uh, we, we think that the station should become like a sort of a noises uh, in this part. So we propose and we manage to, to do it that the station will be planted by trees, and with trees that we have uh, flower during two or three weeks in the spring, so it's kind of, kind of a ritual of the arrival of the, of the thing. And, uh, and this, this has happened and, and we managed to know the identity. So the tree are growing and will grow and, and become that there is an identity in the city uh, of something uh, exceptional. But it has a technical constraint because the people of the, of the tramway, the public transport, they want to be able to take out the, the tree, if there is a problem, the tree dies, so we have to invent a very special system that you can take the, 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 the trees out. And what is interesting, this was how it exists before. This is a huge center of, of exhibition and conference. And this is one, one, this is the longest street of Paris, called Rue de Vaugirard. This is a grand, a grand bar, one of the entrances. There is a big conference hall, style, or places for me. And you see, this was impossible to cross, impossible to, to move. When you have millions of people coming there, it was a big, a big nightmare. And so we, we tried to, to suppress the continuity, to put the station here, uh, a new uh, subway. The subway is here, the subway is here. Subway. And there is another tram that arrives here so that the people can go from the suburb with the tram and they can just go and take the suburb. Uh, the, 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 this tram is very now, very efficient, it goes to the France, and this is a kind of an intersection with a big, a big square. So this is what, what is now done. You have the station, you have the station here. Uh, I think the photo was made before it was finished. It was under construction here. And, uh, and to, to have a big square, so it is sometimes empty, but it is sometimes crowded. So it is uh, the effect, of, it is the effect of the, of the, of the tramway, of the, of the transformation of the, of the city. And you can see when it goes up with the green, uh, with the green landscape. Uh, so, uh, and this is, you know, this, this 
sometimes the tramway goes on the, on the side of the because they, they, it has to serve some 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 special area. Sometimes we uh, we, we organize a big square to to articulate the the, uh, the, uh, the boulevard with the arrival from outside of the city. So we, we organize a big place with trees, benches, and, and, and children can play and so, uh, soft ground so that you can play at the, the station, the cafe, and then and the enlargement of the, of the sidewalk, new trees that are planted. And uh, of course, now we are working for, on, this, on this part, which is going to be, as I told you, inaugurated in 15 days. Uh, and uh, in this part, we have achieved more and more articulation between the subway. This is a new this is, this is not yet finished, you see, this is uh, going to be open soon, I told you, to art articulate so that when you go out of the subway, you are on the platform of the, of the, of the, tra the new tramway. So I mean, this is, I, on many occasions we manage to organize that. It's quite, quite important to articulate those. And also, like the public, this is the Boulevard de Marichaud, which is there. And this is a huge area, very much of social housing, and very, very, very And because there is a new station here, uh, the people living there say, well, we, we don't, we can't go to the station here because we have to go there and to go here, it's too far. There is about 10 meters of different, seven meters, no, 10 meters of difference of uh, height between here and here. This is a, this is a, a, a talent bay here. So they say, we want to have uh, access, so we decide to create, I'm doing a plan of a reorganization of this whole area, to create a, a new street connecting the, the street inside the quartier, inside the street, connecting it directly to the, to the new uh, uh, tramway station. So uh, this is uh, what it looks like. We destroy this building to open the street going up from, from the below to, to the, and this is done now. So this is there, uh, we destroy the destruction, and you can see the street <laughs> is getting under construction now. And there is a new opening on the wall so that uh, the apartment can have a view on the, on the, on the street. So the street is going to be uh, inaugurated soon. And when you arrive at the Boulevard de Marichaux, when it was, this was the, the situation behind, and we create a big garden and an opening so that the station is, is already, I think there is a picture. So we create the arrival of the street with the garden next to the, to the station. Uh, this, is a, this is a project, and, and this is the, so I have a picture, but this is a, we are finishing this year. This is under, you know, under construction. We have to demolish the school that was there and to replace it so that we can have relations. So it's just to show you the effect of the new tramway on the organization of the, of the living area. As I told you, the, the, the question of time is quite important when you do any kind of civil engineering work. It's very complex to articulate all the problems with, with the people living there, with the shops living there. With the, technical, with the studio, with, with all the, so it takes a lot of time and people are very unhappy during the time of those things. They are very happy in once, once it is made. So but there is a period of time in which it is very difficult to do. And frankly, I, 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 everyone knows that you have to suffer some, from some time, but afterwards it's okay. And we work a lot of night to, to have very efficient way of doing it. So it is also something to create artificial new, new systems so that the, the street is constructed in few hours. I was in charge of the coordination architectural of all the, the details of so all the architects working uh, with me to have a, a guide for, for having the same element, the same material, and even reuse in terms of ecology, of course, to reuse existing of, the, of some pavement that existed that we take from the military, we cut them and we, we put them uh, 
community where you can realize because otherwise we would have to take them outside. So it was a huge amount of trucks. So we find the solution to reutilize themselves on the on the spot. And uh, this is kind of detail are uh, quite uh, crucial when you when you when you deal with the thing. And this is uh, just show you because I think it's a, it's, a, it's interesting. This is the RATP when you existed. They are, this is a, an experimental station for, for the bus that they are doing with, 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 in which you have an uh, internet uh, library, electric, uh, electric bicycle, uh, uh, TV uh, uh, information, uh, and so it's kind of a new, new, one of my favorite uh, service station of the night. Of course, telephone, of course. Access to many, many information. Uh, and this is the, the, the experiment. Uh, wood. This is wood, the, the floor is wood, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be improved, and then it will be the standard for um, stations station for the buses. But it works uh, quite, quite, quite well. Um, another problem of transportation is there is a new line. <coughs> First time without the driver, uh, and so we were three three architects uh, in charge. One was in charge of the, 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 the organization of the station along the line normal one, and one for one in the Gare Saint Lazare, and myself for the one in Bibliothèque de France. Because here you have the train going upward, so they are very complicated station. You and the one in Gare Saint Lazare was also very difficult, so it was uh, and uh, so, okay, so just to show that this is a station line and we have, of course, it's a rail track and we are building above the rail track. So, so this is the new line and this is a train station that exists that, and we have to create that under the train, the train will function. So we have to create all the system down under the city. But my idea was to, to so this is this was the traditional level of the train. There is a little slope going to the river to the cell, and this is all the, the railway track are covered and we build buildings on top and uh, I had to build the station down below and of course to find a way outside within the building to go outside or to rely on the existing street and the existing, existing project. So it's a quite interesting project of, of the, and the idea was to do a, a, a station in which there is no corridor. So when you, when you, when you arrive, you are there in the station and you can go to the, you know, in a, in a scale which, which is allowed because this is this was built with, with, uh, under the sea, but it was built like a building, so it was open and we had to, to, to leave the train to pass one part and the, the mobile to pass to, and then covering the, and then covering the, the roof. And so and the idea was to create a big amphitheater between the, the, the line and big, so that when you were arrived from the train, the train are just above, you go down, and then you go and you, you can see from here, you can see uh, the space of the, of the metro under the ground. You have, above the ground, you have an avenue very classical with the demand. And in the middle, you have the bicycle, which is there. And this is for the aeration of the train, which are below, and the subway is below. And all this is new. And in this, in, in this building, this is one of them that I built, you have the, the, the lift. And the, and you have also, as you can see, the, the, um, the, uh, the, the stations, well, you don't see it, the stations go out and directly with the light, you go down very, very deep. You, but you, you have to, you, when, you are, when you are down and you look up, I don't have a picture of it, and you see the light. The light is coming down. You, you know that you go from the light directly to the, to the the ground and 
to speak on theater than the past. It was meant to be a public space inside the, inside the metro, at the ground level. Okay. Um, so this is some image of that was the station and how it looks like. And, and uh, certainly what is more uh, interesting for me is that we managed to be, I mean, this is for a big presentation of fashion, oh, not of fashion, of a new film. That the, the premiere was done there, and all the people are sitting, uh, sitting on the thing. There was fashion show, uh, fashion show, uh, there was a uh, skating ring, uh, and, uh, and many other activities. So inside the, inside the, the, the subway, it's like a public place which, uh, which accommodates many, many events. And, and uh, I was asked to do um, architects, architects Intervention, and I refused to, to have an artist. I asked a philosopher and a writer to make a series of texts that we put everywhere at random, and uh, all all the station is full of I don't know 200 little texts that are on the ground or on the on the on the on the glass of the, of the metro, uh, just to have. And there are so many of them that people taking the, the train everywhere, every day, sorry, they, they, they always told me, oh, we discover a new one, we discover a new one. So it was a kind of artistic intervention which was linked because it is, it is a, a station for the National Library. This project is, a, is also quite interesting. You know, like in all the cities of the world, uh, you have an historical city, this is Rennes in the Brittany, and there has been in the year 50 big social extension that was made outside in nowhere, uh, and now there is a freeway going there. So all those places are submitted to big projects by the government, huge, huge amount of money by the National Agency of Urban Renewal to, to transform them, to organize, to, 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 to see all the problems. But this one had a particularity that it was built, and the mayor decided to put a, a, a metro inside, inside this area. So suddenly this area that where all the people living in the center would say that it is uh, outside the city, you could go from there to the central station in, in, in 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. So, so we, we were in charge of that, and we were in charge of how to redevelop um, around the station and around the avenue. So this is the type of space, you know, this kind of cars. We know this landscape it could be anywhere in any city. It could be uh, in Toronto, in, in London, in, in Berlin, or so. And uh, so the line was existing, and the station were existing. See, they, they had made very fancy station to, to, to do something funny. But, uh, you know, they didn't. This is a parking lot on, on two levels because all the parking lots were built on, along the street, totally, and, and, the, and the housing were behind. And that's where you see to, to go from the, the station to the housing, it was a nightmare, the big space and so on. So, what we, um, we organized is first of all, the big avenue that were too big are going to be suppressed, so we are going to have only one, one two lane, the one, one, uh, you guys only on one uh, uh, unique sense, you see, and to extend, to extend uh, sidewalk, uh, trees, bicycle, and all this. The, the work is in, is in this, this is a project, but it is going, it's under construction now. So uh, this was a sports cultural center, and to redevelop the continuity of the around. So this is the existing, and this is uh, this is, a, this is a project. Um, uh, the station, I will show you some projects of station, but another aspect that I want to, to point out because it is very much like this, all those red dots are parking, huge parking, that, that, like the one you have seen, not huge parking, two levels, one below red, up, and one on top, which is there. And 
the house are, are, are there. And so we propose to reutilize all those, those space to build and to intensify the scene. So by example, all of those spaces used to be party and are going to be building so that we can we keep the tower here and we, we try to establish a corner and a continuity play and, and, and to establish different things. So by the way, this is how it looks like. This is a tower, this is the parking that exists and we built uh, our under. Uh, we reorganize the parking and we build uh, a continuity, a street continuity, and we still keep the, keep the uh, kind of more private garden in between the, the new, the, this was the road, you were, you were in the middle of nowhere the first city, so to create a, a space. So this was a scheme, and this is a project in which uh, you can see uh, on the parking how we organize and along the parking how we organize. So we, we took all the parking and uh, well, this is more than a, a parking, this is just one big uh, space. And then along the street, all the white building are there without touching and without destroying. You see, by example, the tower there for some reason here we don't have. But this parking is going to be like this parking and this parking is going to, to be. So there is about 6,000 flats all together in the, in the existing uh, 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 run, and we are creating uh, 1,000 of new apartments. And so this is, this is, this is a project along the street, uh, and we, keep, we still keep some parking in uh, open air, we can't do that all the time. But it's a very careful step, and we work very much with, uh, with the people, and uh, this is a uh, long but the, to come back to the, to the transport, so this is, this is the line of the transport, this is, this is a triangle station which is there in the middle of nowhere. And so we build on top of the station, there is a cafe, there is a, we are going to do, we are going to reduce, as you have seen, this is the same avenue that the one you have seen before. We, we, we were a little further there, and when it arrived to the station, there is built on the, on the station, one road is there, it was two, two very large roads and uh, this, this created an intensity, a urban intensity, and this is uh, what we do all over. Another <laughs> things with problem of uh, transportation, this is for a train station in Poitiers, and uh, this is the big, the big, uh, the big uh, three, this is the last one. <laughs> and uh, this is the train station uh, in Poitiers with the whole historical city is on the top of the hill and you have uh, big bridges that links uh, the two sides of the valley. There is a bridge that's down, there's a bridge very, very high going from the top to the top. And all this land was available, this was the existing station. So we had to develop a project all around there with a bus station for 15 articulated bus, 700, uh, 700 uh, parking, conference center, and office on the, on, the, on the land. And this was impossible to do the parking under, under the, because there was a flood, there could be flood, so it was forbidden. I, 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 it's difficult to explain. So this was, this was the project. But what is interesting is that because you need to have uh, an escalator to serve the parking, we, we, from the arrival of the station, we utilize this as a public space so that the people could go up and reach the gangway uh, above the valley there. So, so the, the parking serves as a system of connection for the people, instead of having to climb the staircase, which are usually uh, very long to climb, they could go up to the center of the city by using the, the escalator of the tunnel. And this is a huge, huge, you can't see the scale, you will see on photo, uh, the, the scale of the, of the parking. What, what I want to show that, uh, that uh, so this is, you know, this is the limit of the office, this is the limit of the station, and this is the limit inside the station, and this is the limit of the outside of the, of the station. 
What I want to say that we took this is also reorganizing the, the space in front in front of the of the station. So putting the car away, usually the, uh, only the taxi coming from there. So the, the office building is there. Um, the conference center is there between the railroad. So the big conference center which is which is there. The station. And this is the, the building, and this is to say that the, the articulation of large buses and possibility of parking is absolutely necessary when you want to do a very multimodal. Uh, to conclude very quickly, because it's time, I'm not going to tell you anything really about, about our project because we are just starting, but I know. That we have to build the base for the city to grow, and uh, doing the whole project is a base for tomorrow. Thank you. My name is Timmy Syed. If I had to introduce myself today, I would say I ran for mayor against Rob Ford and I lost. So, uh, that's the best introduction I can have on a day like this. Uh, I went to Coritiba, I met Jamie Lerner, he was very gracious with his time. You share a language with him when you say urban acupuncture. Tonight you gave very good examples of mobility and identity, which you also share with him. He says sustainability. Uh, my French is not very well uh, enough to understand when you said um, something like, the mega city is the solution to the post Kyoto, or that's, uh, that's the sustainability uh, point of view that you have. Could you please uh, expand or explain what you mean by that? in this 